it is know your equipment options. As you can see, I also have John Laux with me and Jenna Sackett, and I'm Kelly Walters. And as you can see, we all have different presses next to us. We're gonna just break down the type of presses that are available with Hottronics. This is a very, very small amount of what you can actually get when it comes to size and different styles. So bear with us as we go through why each press is different. Um, and of course, feel free to ask any questions, comment, obviously in the chat and we are going to go from basically press to press and come back to questions as well. So this is going to be a very free flowing open conversation. We want to make sure that you guys have as much information as possible. Uh, that way you guys can make the best decision when it comes to purchasing a press. Um, so Jenna is going to kick it off first. Before we get started, just everybody know while each press is a different price point and there's different functions within the press, the heating element in all of the presses that we're talking about is the exact same. So there isn't one press that is going to have a better heating element. It's just going to have a different brain and different capabilities on the way you actually take the upper heating element to the platen. So take it away, Jenna. Thank you, Kelly. Hello, everybody. As Kelly mentioned, um, we are going to be going through kind of a good, better, best scenario here with three really popular styles, all made in the USA at Hottronics. Um, and the first one we're going to be starting off with is a great entry level heat press. It has a nice entry level um investment um as far as you know the the price tag goes uh and it is a 15 by 15 and another thing that i like about this heat press other than it being a 15 by 15 and it's perfect for uh just a small heat press that i need for printing basics is that it's also only 62 pounds so if i need to close this thing up and store it under a bed or store it in a closet that is Perfect, right? So uh, again, this is a really great entry level heat press and it is known as the A to Z. Um, so it has a lot of great features. The top three features that we always talk about whenever you're considering a heat press investment is a time, temperature, and pressure capability within that heat press. The A to Z does offer a time and temperature readout, which you can see on this uh, menu screen here. So right now it's giving me my temperature readout at 324 at the moment. It does fluctuate a little bit, but it is set to 325. And I have the power within this menu to go in and change my temperature and change my time and also adjust my pressure based off of the heat transfer that I am heat applying. So if you guys did attend those three classes earlier where we did a lot of demo with the heat presses and we talked about time, temperature, and pressure based on the heat transfers that we were heat printing, we're able to go in here and a lot for that within this press so that we know that we are getting that accurate temperature and accurate time every time we lock our heating element down. And it's very simple. Um, all you have to do is hit the mode button, which is the center button on that screen. And it is going to light up our side menu with set temperature. That way you know that you are setting the temperature. And at that point, you just hit the plus and minus buttons on that menu. And then you set your temperature that way. So once it's at the desired temperature that you would like for it to be, you're gonna go ahead and hit that mode button once more. And it is going to change the side menu to set time. That way, you know, you are now setting your time, right? So if I wanted it to be at 15 seconds or I wanted it to be at 10 seconds, all based on those instructions that come with my heat transfer, I have the ability to adjust that right here so that I can ensure that my temperature and my time are accurate. Now, this is standard for any of the Hottronics heat presses. In order for our heating element to actually start heating up to that temperature and adjust the time, we need to hop on out of that menu or else our platen doesn't really know 
what it's telling, what we're telling it to change to. All right, so I'm gonna hit that menu button once more. The lights on the side of the menu are gonna go completely out. That's how I know that I am no longer at that or in that menu and my temperature and my time have been set. Okay. Um, now it's going to show me my temperature and what it is set at. And as Kelly mentioned, these uh, heat presses that we're showing today, they all work on that same heating element. It is an extremely durable heating element of which all have a lifetime warranty on. Um, so you can ensure that you are working with top quality with any of these three presses. Now within that um, heating element, there are coils that are evenly lined or snaked through that upper heating element so that you are getting accurate temperature, whether it be in the center of the heat press or the top right-hand corner of the heat press. Your temperature is going to be even across that entire surface. All right, so um, another key thing that we always talk about is pressure. And this does have pressure adjustment, right? It does not give me a pressure readout, but there are some tips and tricks to adjusting the pressure with this particular machine. So the knob, there is a knob on the back of the heat press here. It actually is identical to the knob that's right here for me to be able to move and swing my heating element um, in and out. Uh, but that is what my pressure adjustment is going to be. So to know that I'm at a firm pressure, I'm just going to turn that clockwise until I can't turn it anymore. That means I have dialed in a very firm pressure, which is going to ensure that I am getting the most pressure that I can possibly get across the surface area of my upper element, right? So that's evenly dispersing that pressure for me. And then uh, it's going to lock that down. Now, if I don't need to be at a firm pressure, maybe I'm working with a material that applies at a light to medium pressure. The way I know to get back to those is to turn the knob one and a half. All right. So if I want to get to a medium pressure, I'm going to turn it one full way and then one half turn. All right. So counterclockwise. Now I'm at a medium pressure. Now, as you start working with this heat press a lot more, you really learn it and you can understand based off of feel whenever you lock that down, uh, how firm that is actually uh, pressing down onto your transfer. All right, so if it's a turn and a half to get to medium, it's gonna be a turn and a half to get to your light pressure as well. So you'll do that, you can lock that down and you can see how easy that is, uh, not physically taxing at all, whether it be firm, medium, or light when it comes to pressure. Now, one of the things that we always talk about um, in addition to pressure is ensuring that you can get your um, product isolated on that heat press, right? So that's the one thing um, that we've been extremely innovative through Stahl's Hotronics is ensuring threadability and the ability to interchange platens or utilize other heat press accessories um, if we don't have the capability to interchange a platen. So the A to Z is uh, just slightly limited here. We're starting with a 15 by 15. However, we can drop this platen size down to a six by 10. Okay, so for those of you that are familiar with um, the Hotronics um, heat presses, you know that they have interchangeable platens using a quick latch release. However, this one's going to be a little different. So the same knob that you see up here is also at the bottom of this heat press right under the base of the press. So all I have to do is just loosen that knob. My pin's gonna drop out and now I can interchange my platen, right? So if I want to go ahead and just load on my six by 10, you can see these little notches here are actually going to line up with the base of my heat press so it's locked in place. And now to ensure that it's not moving on me, I'll just pull my pin up there and then I will turn it clockwise to lock it in place. So now it's not going to move on me, okay? 
Now we always talk about threadability. So that's one thing that Hotronics has uh, innovated in the industry and being able to thread your garments on. Um, this A to Z does have a center post, which allows us to either thread from the front, front or thread from the back, okay? Now, this isn't the only entry level heat press out there, all right? So there is another one. If you guys have visited our um, events and or our event specials page on um, the website here that you're watching um, this event through, there is also a Stahl's Basic Clam heat press, which comes in the same dimensions of the A to Z. It actually comes in three different sizes, the 15 by 15, which is the same as the A to Z. It comes in a larger size, a 16 by 20, which is the industry standard for printing apparel, and then a smaller 11 by 15. Okay, so just know that that is, that is a clam style option, and um, it is available through Transfer Express. So if you guys want to check out that heat press, it is on the events specials tab. Um, right below the A to Z, okay? Now we are doing a special on the A to Z if this entry-level heat press interests you. It is a package price of $800. It's going to uh, include this six by 10 interchangeable platen in addition to the platen protector. So that's another thing that we highly recommend um, having for your interchangeable platens so that you can easily thread and just really protect the longevity of the silicone pad that is on those platens, right? Then it's also going to include your craft paper and of course your shipping, okay? Um, and also if you guys are using the A to Z but you need to isolate other print areas, you have the ability to use heat press pillows and print perfect pads. So all of these accessories are available to you. Um, and they all really help with isolating print areas and ensuring that firm pressure every single time you load a garment or accessory onto this heat press. All right, so that is um, all I have on the A to Z. Before we move on to Kelly, who is going to be showing us a next level heat press, the Hotronics Auto Clam, I wanna check in and make sure there aren't any questions specific to this piece of equipment. Nope, you're all set. All right, awesome. Thank you, Sarah. Hey guys. Okay, I am. Oh, there we go. Good. Hey, good job, Sarah. <laughs> I Thanks, Kelly. <laughs> I was gonna like pin it. I'm like, nah. I'm just gonna stop. Um, okay, guys. So I have the Hotronics Auto Clam. Um, I also have it in a 16 by 20. This is a press that comes in three different platen sizes, meaning the upper heating element doesn't exceed 16 by 20 and a couple of other sizes. Now you can check out the um, show specials to show you the 16 by 16 and what it comes with, but I'm going to specifically talk towards the 16 by 20 just because this is the biggest you can go. You can always go smaller on a platen, but you cannot go smaller in the heating element. So right now I actually have the Tagalong platen, which if you watched my class, this is what I was using, where this one comes standard with the rectangle 16 by 20. Bear with me, she's a little bit, little bit of a beast. So this is what it looks like, just like Jenna, there is a pin, but it's just a little bit different in terms of actually getting your platen in there. I'll break down how it actually operates in just a second. I just really wanted to make sure that we saw this pretty quick. There was also a little lever right here. So I'm just gonna flip that guy back. And now my um, platen is set, ready to go. The difference between the A to Z is there's a couple of different things, one size, Two, there are completely, they are completely different platens. So keep in mind if I'm using the tag along or even a same six by 10 in size, it's still a different pin system. So you are not able to use certain platens with the A to Z. However, you get that swing away function and the mechanism to pull down is very fluid and very easy to use. 
So let's just keep going on the auto clam. Now, mine is actually on a tabletop, a caddy, ta uh, yeah, a tabletop stand, and there's also a caddy stand. What this does is it actually lifts the press, making it uh, the garment threadable. So you're gonna hear Jenna, you just heard Jenna talk about it. You're gonna hear John talk about it. And I'm pretty sure we've talked about it in all of the classes that we've been decorating. So that's giving you the ability to open whatever item it is, and then actually threading it through just like a pillowcase. So simply by having this, I am now able to thread. If I did not have the tabletop stand, or the caddy stand, I would not be able to thread. I would have to use a pillow or lay it on top and fight with the shirt, potentially getting a wrinkle under it. Now, next, I call this pretty much the brain on any heat press. So if you hear that come from me, no, I'm talking about what is basically telling this unit to heat up how long for the heating element to stay down for or until you actually go and lift the heating element. And then now with the auto clam, we have the ability to get a pressure readout. You can't really see this. Um, it just looks like a blurry light to you, but it is identical um, in terms of setting up just like, uh, excuse me, just like Jenna. So there is a mode middle button Every time you click that, you're basically activating um, the settings feature. So hitting it once allows you to use the plus and minus sign for the temperature. Hitting it the first, or second time allows you to set application one. If you hit it again, you can actually create an application number two. So if you're pre-pressing, your first application or your time would be um, registered as whatever you set it. Right now, I have it at four seconds. And when I hit mode again, it's gonna tell me I have it set at eight seconds, which should actually be my final or first application. All three lights are actually lit up right here. And when I hit mode one more time, that goes away, making sure that my uh, time and temperature is actually locked in our equipment. Now, next, I also have a lever to adjust the pressure. But the difference is I'm actually gonna get a readout. So every time I crank this and lock my heating element in place, I have a readout right here. So right now it's actually telling me I'm in at an eight, which is a firm pressure. If I go in and I loosen up this knob, then I'm actually at a five now. So. I'm gonna get a pressure readout with the eight, or excuse me, the auto clam, and it's also going to automatically open by itself. So just a couple of fun, that's hot, but just a couple of fun features about this press. I love the auto open. It helps me kind of keep going on my tasks. And this is just so easy to come in and adjust the time and temperature as needed. Now there are a variety of platens that work with the autoclam. And um, if you attended Jennifer's performance class uh, in terms of garments, she talked about the power platens and the power platens are great for the autoclam. That's actually what this box is. You can't see it, but this, there's actually a box right here that is ready for me to load a power platen in at any time. Um, for the most part, we are looking at a two-year uh, warranty on the motherboard, five years on framework, and a lifetime on the heating element. So with all of these presses, the um, heating element itself, like Jenna said, is the same. They're all extremely durable. They have that snake coil effect, and um, the lifetime warranty on the heating element is just incredible. Um, Sarah, do you have any questions? Yeah, so we have about two. Okay. Um, first one, when pressing a hoodie front side of it, how do you align the pocket with the decal when the hood is not centered? Say it again. So basically, how do they align their logo onto the front of the hoodie if the hood on the hoodie is crooked or isn't centered, like if it's sewn on crooked? So I would be going off of the V versus the hood. 
Is that what you're talking about? Are you guys, yes. John, Jenna, are you hearing this the same way I am? Yeah, so I think the, the hood's not matched up with the pockets. Like, it's just not all center, which is a common effect of hoodies. So where do you line it up with? Do you line it up with the pocket or do you line it up with the hood? My opinion would be to line it up with the hood, right? Because your, your head's going to be on straight. Your logo's going to be there. If your pocket's a little crooked, then that's okay. If it's way off, you probably need to go back to your retailer and figure out how to get a better sew. But I would align it with the V-neck over yeah. the pocket, so to speak. Or maybe cut the difference. You're going to have to set it on there and kind of get a look at it. I, I agree with that. The other thing, I know it's a huge pain, is put the garment on and have the logo on your item and try to gauge which route is better. So if you're putting this item on and you're looking in the mirror and it doesn't look right to center it up with the V part of that hood, but it doesn't look right there, then you can kind of decide how far off from each, you know, element that you need to be. That That's the best way I would try to get that center point. That mannequin behind you worked perfect for that too, right? <laughs> well, like this guy. Yep. Yeah. So that would be an easy way. Then you wouldn't have to fight with arms going through. Um, and that's when a thermo tape is going to be your, your best friend. Take it off and then measure just to kind of help you going forward until you get a little bit of a rhythm. Perfect. Thank you. And one more. Um, on a clamshell press, since the heating element is angled when open, does the top front tend to get hotter than the center? The top front right here. So like how the clam is open, I, I believe yeah. meant the top heating element since that is pointing all the way up. Is it hotter? Like does the heating get off because it's open? No, 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 no. Um, because you have to remember that your the coils in the press are what's activating it and keeping it registered. You've also got your temperature right here. So it's not like it's just setting it at 300 degrees and then letting it go wherever. It's going to keep that consistent temperature. Um, now, in terms of the platen, this does feel cooler because right now I have a fan going. But back here, because the heating element is closer to the platen, it does tend to seem a little bit hotter. But the heating element itself, um, I have not physically touched it or taken a gun to it, but it should should remain consistent in heat throughout the entire application process for decorating time. Great. Thank you. Um, that's it for right now. Cool. Okay. So um, if that's it for the auto clam, it's very, very similar to the A to C. We just go bigger in size and then we go with the ability to use some of our interchangeable platens that Hotronics has created. Of course, the power platens and then that auto open feature without going into an air unit. So, uh, John, you're up. All right, great. Thanks, Kelly. Thanks, Jenna. Um, definitely great presses there with some great features. So I'm excited to bring you the Fusion and tell you the difference between the Fusion and the Auto Clam. And the Auto Clam has a lot of the same features, um, but we have some different and exciting things here. One is that you're able with this press to get the heat out of the way. So we're able to draw it out and load our garment this way, away from the heating element. And the other thing is we're able to swing it. It has a locking mechanism. We can unlock it and we can swing it away. Um, you need a lot of room to get it back there. But again, that enables us to get fully involved in our sleeving capability, our threadable capability, as well as get over the top of our unit and not be working in that heated area like the clam press, which I really like. So again, this, this slides out and it does swing away. The other great function, I'm gonna leave that swung out. Um, it does have the removable platens just like all the heat presses do. So it has the same functionality as the clam press. Um, in fact, you if you have a clam press or you have the platens, the mechanism on the bottom of these and this is the same, so they're interchangeable. So the 11 by 15 or the six by 10 or that tag along platen that's so popular right now will fit on this fusion. 
while I have this off, I want to show you the difference in the neck of this. Like the auto clan, you had to have it on a stand to really get it or make it threadable. This has what I like to call a goose neck. So you're really able to thread this all the way back on to the very back and really even out and get rid of any wrinkles or get rid of anything that the press is going to cause or, or basically, you know, pulling on the shirt by not getting it all the way around. So that gooseneck is very, very, very nice. Um, so I'll put this back on. It is heavy. Kelly was right. And I'll lock it down just like we did before. I'm going to swing my press back. Now this press is a manual press. So with the time, temperature, and pressure, which I'll talk about in a second, you do have to manually lock it down and push it up. It does not have that auto release function that the auto plan does. So you're gonna pull it down and push it up, all right? And then spin it or draw it however you would like. The time, temperature, and pressure, the pressure adjustment is just like the other presses, it's right here. Um, it is on our, it does give us a readout on our board. So we're able to see what our pressure is when we close it. That's a very light pressure, as you can see. So if I give it that one and a half turns, like Jenna talked about, and close it down, I get a medium pressure on my pressure reading. All right. So you always want to do that too when you've got your garment in so you can get an accurate pressure. All right. Just like the other units, it does have that same platen, so that same lifetime warranty, that single coil that goes all the way around, and a little bit of movement. Like the clam press, it has a center pressure, so it comes down from the center, allowing it to, if it is uneven for some reason, make that adjustment so you get a nice, firm pressure across, right? We want to be very careful that we get all of our seams and, and wrinkles out so we don't have to worry about it. But if we do have that high side, the platen does make that adjustment a little bit, all right? One great thing about this press, and it's really, really hard to see on the screen, so, um, but it does have a fully digital user interface, all right? This is the Fusion IQ model. So everything is pre-programmed in. It has a full book and I'm gonna kind of click through this. I know it's kind of hard to see, but it'll give me those talking points. So when I hit that menu, it gives me all the things that I have pre-programmed in, whether it be SimStitch or Thermal Film or Premium Plus, it's all in here. I'm able to select what I'm applying and then it'll give me an automatic temperature adjustment. I don't have to keep track. As long as I know what I'm pressing, I can go on, select it, and I don't have to have it, you know, written on the wall or a cheat sheet or something like that. It takes a lot of the guesswork, well, like the bad term, but it takes all the, the work out of finding what you're doing and programming in because it's already there. Now it's given me a temperature. I clicked it over to premium plus. So it's right now it's at 329. It's cooling down to 280 degrees it's telling me it's gonna take 12 minutes to get there. So within the next 12 minutes, it should be that that two or eight. It gives me multiple times. It tells me what, what I'm pressing. It has two timers, a timer one and a timer two. Timer one is gonna be my preset, which is for five seconds. And then if I click on timer two, it will give me my application time, which is 12 seconds. And what that means, is as long as I'm, I'll click it over to one, I close it down, it'll count that five seconds out, it's gonna beep at me and tell me to open up, right? And then it'll click to that second timer. So as I load my, my transfer on, then on my garment, then I'll have the, the right pressure. And then it'll go back to the pre-press and that. Now you can load up to four hits on the machine, which is really nice. So if you have something that you're gonna do a pre-press and then you're gonna do an application and maybe you have to peel the carrier and hit it again, it will cycle through each one, all right? The other great thing about this press is it does have, or it does, it will track performance 
with the Hotronics online portal. What that means is if you're pressing something or you have somebody pressing for you, it will gauge where the temperature was through each application in each hit. It's really a phenomenal function of the press. It also has a troubleshooting and self-diagnostic via Wi-Fi through that portal. So if there's a problem, we can look at it and see, okay, this is it, and they can send you parts accordingly, all right? So very user-friendly. It also gives you the ability to set different users. So if you have somebody that you don't want inside all the functionality of the machine, you can give it like a, um, a username for, for Stacy if she's plugging it, or you can have a username for Kyler or Tyler or something like that. So they walk up, they plug, and then you can track their application times and really see how efficient they are. Most just leave it on one and just track it all the way through, but it does have that functionality, all right? Um, it does come with a lifetime warranty on the heating element, just like all the rest of the units. It has a five year on the framework and two year on the board warranty. Again, 24 seven day service. So you can call in and, and get the support you need. So any questions so far? Um, we have a couple. Okay. I'll start. Um, how important is it to have that pressure number compared to the A to Z? Worried about screwing up shirts without it. So, the so in my opinion, time, temperature, and pressure is everything, right? So time, you want to get that adhesive up, you know, up to the right time. The pressure to get the adhesive pushed in, and of course, the temperature to to get the adhesive to melt, right? So they, they kind of go, the time and the temperature go hand in hand. The pressure, I mean, you lose, you're basically losing a functionality based on price. So if you're trying to jump in and get into that A to Z, which is a great press, um, it's good, right? You're gonna learn to maneuver through that pressure reading. But if you have it here, better, right? Because you're, again, taking the guest work out. So is it important? It absolutely is. But if you're you're basing it on price, you're going to have to give up something. And pressure is one of those things. So, thank you. And the next one is: Is this heat press the only one that has the auto save feature? Uh, the dual. I'm sorry. The air models. So the air, the Fusion IQ models. So that would be basically the Fusion IQ. This one the single air fusion, the dual air fusion, and the 360 IQ hat press all have those, that functionality built into the IQ technology. Great, thank you. Um, that is it for right now. All right, perfect. One thing that I do think is worth mentioning across all of these heat presses, if you guys are considering bringing um, these heat presses into your home, or if you guys just genuinely have a lot of stuff hooked up, they all require a 20 amp circuit, like a dedicated 20 amp circuit. So I wouldn't want to have this heat press plugged in with an extension cord also plugged in that is keeping my laptop on and something else running like the Cricut machine. All right, so just make sure that you're keeping in mind, no matter what heat press investment you end up making here at this event, that it will all require that dedicated 20 amp circuit. All right, perfect. So as you can see, to talk a little bit more on that, all, all of these units are running in our home. I think we're all in our homes, right? Um, so I've got it on a circuit here um, that I've got nothing else on. We checked the circuit breaker. We checked the amperage. So I had somebody come in. It wasn't expensive for them to. They called a sniffer and plug it in and make sure we've got a 20 amp breaker on the outside. Even though the machine says 15 amp, 20 amp is the way to go, right? If you don't have enough power, you run into the risk of you know, melting cords or blowing boards, and, and that's all bad news. So you definitely, Jen is very right, it's very important to have enough power coming to the press. Kelly, did you want to add anything? I noticed you started talking, but you were on mute. Yeah. Make sure we weren't oh skipping God. that over. 
Well, so this is very, very easy thing. Um, at shows or even working with customers, but one of the biggest questions that I have ever received about getting a heat press is, is somebody going to come and install it? And the answer is no. And that's not a bad thing. It's because it's a pu- it's a plug and play piece of equipment. What I mean is when you get that Hotronics box and you open it up, you don't have to put anything together. In fact, it's almost easier to take out the platen if you can, because it's that much lighter to get the unit out of the box. But all you have to do is take that cord and plug it to where you are, whatever outlet you are using. You don't have to do any type of software install except for the fusion lines, the IQ lines, because you have to sync to Wi-Fi. You have to make sure that um, the firmware is all up to date on that. But it, it doesn't require anybody coming in and really building this in in your space, even with the dual, it, it comes in a crate um, ready to go. So don't be intimidated by how big these are, even by the weight, make sure you have somebody to help you. But the most important thing to remember is that the minute you plug it in and you flip the on switch, it's going to be ready to go. John and, and the Fusion, those settings come pre-programmed so you can adjust um, So very, very, we try to make it as easy as possible to where you're not on a schedule to get things installed. Uh, Sarah, do you have any other questions coming through? Um, Jesse asked, how do you know what power you need for your um, connection? I just messaged about the tech specs tab on the product page, but if you wanna go into that for everybody else to hear. To know what electrical is for. The electrical outlet for each press, how do they know what they need? So it is on the tech specs of the Hotronics page as well as the stalls page. So it is there. Like the, the air fusion says 120 volts, 15 amps, um, takes 100, uh, 1800 watts. So it's, I mean, it's all there. Most of your circuits in your house are, you know, 15 or 20. Um, you know, just check the page and make sure that you, you get it tested before you put it in. You can't go wrong. But no no power strips like we talked about before, no extension cords. Um, you really want to plug it directly into that plug, you know, without any hindrance on, on the load. So, but all on the product pages. Great. Thank you. And then one more for right now. He says, hi, John. Good to see you. My question is, why don't you guys ever talk about or demo the Fusion IQ? So as far as demoing the screen of it, um, just hard to see, um, you know, to bring it a thing. And I used to have a camera that was set up and it was kind of tough. I could pull this one closer and we can kind of look at it if you want. See if we can do that real quick. No, if you're going to get a good. That's not bad at all, John. That's that's actually pretty good. How's that, my green light? That looks beautiful. Great work. All right. So handy dandy uh, stylus, so I don't have to push too many buttons. So here is my book of presets. Um, hopefully I'm not yelling into the camera. It's kind of hard to see there, but they're all in here. You can also add your own. So if we needed to change something or we wanted to add our own, we could do that. Um, so you would type in a name, give it a temperature, um, a timer and a pressure, you know, and then there's those four things I talked about, the four different sets. Um, but if we select Sim Stitch, oops, let's go back to home. We go back into our book, we select sim stitch, and it's going to heating to 350. It's going to take seven minutes remaining. Kind of hard to see. There's our two timers. Our first timer is for five seconds. Our second timer is for 20 seconds. Um, that's the temperature the press is at now. Remember, it's going to 350. And our pressure says zero. It doesn't register until we close it. Um, and then our time. And then again, we can lock it if we wanted to so that you can't change that on the go. We have our different user functions right now. It's just set for a manager, but we could add somebody if, you know, so be it. 
Um, and then, yeah, and then we've got our, obviously our settings button, like you have on anything where you can do some calibration or change your time, but that's all very simple. Your Wi-Fi connector, um, software, and then collect, connecting to the cloud. So it's all pretty simple. Any questions on that? It's a little blurry now, isn't it? Yeah, but you can still get a, I mean, it's a, it's a good real good look at it, right? Yeah, there are no questions. Everyone's just liking it. So thank you. All right. So yeah, great functionality. Thermofilm, select that. It gives our time. Let's say we wanted, and you would never do this, but we wanted to add another set pressure because that's our pre-press, our press. And then if we went into our settings, whoops. Well, now I'm out of control. Let's get out of our settings. Back to home, thermofilm, into our book. We want to edit thermofilm. And we want to add, there's our first press, our second press, our third press, and we give it, uh, let's say uh, 10 seconds. Enter. And then our fourth press is going to be set to zero because we don't need it. And we're good. So we'll go back. Oh, save. I'm going to hit my home button. Thermal film. Now you see there's that third temperature or that third press that we added on there. Pre-press, application, and then our extra one. So very user friendly, very user friendly. I will add too, just to speak to that little status bar that is on the top of that screen. It does let you know when it is, like John mentioned, it does let you know if it's going to heat up to a different temperature based on the product that you have selected in the menu. Uh, but also that status bar will light off, light up and let you know if your pressure is off as well. So if you lock down and your pressure doesn't match what is set up in the menu, then it will um, give you a little yield sign. Like you can see there, it turned orange. There's a little yield sign. It's letting us know that our pressure is off and that we need to adjust that. That way you're just further ensuring that you're getting that accurate pressure when you apply. All right. All right, Sarah, anything else? Um, nope, it looks like you guys got them all. Um, it, is, it just came in that um, the question about the Fusion IQ, about why you don't demo it. He was also asking about the Air Fusion and why it's never demoed also. Yes, so the air unit is just not demoed because due to the pandemic, we were in a lot of our homes and we were demoing a lot of stuff there. So we just didn't have a unit um, in any of those places. So we're working on that. Hopefully we can demo it live and not just, um, you know, through, through a phone call or a Zoom and actually demo it live through those Zooms. But that will to come. We're, we're working on getting it into a space. So Great, thank you. Um, right now, that is the end of questions. Jenna or John, do you guys have any closing, just things to keep in mind for presses? Um, uh, yeah, if you guys need to schedule any one-on-one -on -one meetings, if you guys want to ask more specific questions, get more information on each of the presses, you guys have the ability to schedule that with us. So definitely take advantage of that. Um, it's in the meetings. I think there's a tab, right? Kelly, correct me if I'm wrong, if there's a tab for meetings, if you want to schedule with somebody. Yeah, it should be where your agenda is. And then you should have a schedule and then you can just go in there and create a meeting for somebody. One more question. Um, actually Jesse asked if the starter pack box comes with new presses. The marketing kit, maybe. Yes. Okay. Yes. So if you order your heat press through stalls, you get the stalls marketing kit, which is all of the, it'll come in this box, right? And it has all of the heat transfer vinyl and full color um, digital heat transfer vinyl. 
If you order a heat press from Transfer Express, you will get their large marketing kit, which includes the idea book, um, a lot of different screen print transfers, and both of those kits have all of your application instructions and also t-shirts to get started with. Starter kit threw me for a loop. <laughs> I could not process what it was. Uh, John, anything else from you? No, just the importance of the right accessories. Um, we didn't really talk about because we've talked about it before in all the rest of the classes. Your Teflon sheets, or your nonstick sheets, your craft paper, you know, the right platens underneath is so important, right, to get the right application. Um, and just and just make sure you follow time, temperature, and pressure, right? It's very, very important. So, um, and that's that's why we like our, our heat presses so much. They've got that lifetime warranty on that platen. It's all level and flat. It's got that coil with the right accessories. You really can't go wrong. So I'm... Uh, yeah, stand behind them for sure. Yeah. And it, with that being said and having the right accessories, that's why these show specials and packages are so important because it's going to get you started with all of those things. So definitely, if you haven't had a chance yet, check out the event specials. It'll list all those additional accessories within those packages. So you're just getting set up for success with the heat press. Guys, those are also good through the end of the week. So if you're going through those packages and you're trying to understand, you know, exactly why you would need an 11 by 15 over a six by 10 or why they may be beneficial to have both. That's another really good time to go ahead and ask those questions, whether in that one or one, or even as classes are going on, um, we're here to help and guide as best as we possibly can. So these packages have been created to really just put your best foot forward and give you what you need to decorate more than just a t-shirt. So um, that is pretty much for this at the end of the class. Jenna, did you have something? No, you didn't. Okay, I didn't know if you were going for it. Um, so we're gonna let you out a couple of minutes early. We have a couple more classes going through the end of the night. Make sure you stay tuned all the way through happy hour. And um, like I said, questions, get them asked and make sure you schedule those one-on-ones. Thank you guys so much for tuning into this class. We hope that it provided some insight on really which press uh, to help you make a selection and uh, get rocking on some t-shirts. So we'll see you guys later. Bye.